Happy holidays. This is Plus Politics and I am Mary Anna Cohn. As the year winds down, let's take you through some of the most interesting conversations that we have had on the show in the year 2022. If you look at um, the wide raft of what we face, look, I was a reporter in this country going to the sites of all these terror attacks. I was in Abuja at the this day bombing. I was in Nyanya when the motor park was exploded by Boko Haram. I was in, I was in the, 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 the Catholic church that was exploded on Sunday just on the outskirts of Abuja. I was there. Bannock, same thing. So I have an idea of what we're talking about when we talk about how bad things were and how, how things are today. Uh, you know, I always, I always marvel at the ability of some people to glamorize the things that, that uh, are, are wrong in the country for, for narrow political ends. What I've always said is that if you look empirically at what has happened in this country from 2015 till today, uh, as against what was happening before then, I'll remind you very quickly before I go into what we've done, that from 2011 to 2015, I didn't even mention the UN bombing, which was even the most catastrophic, uh, is this. You had young boys in boarding schools across the north uh, waking up to terrorists entering their rooms with no light. They were having their throats slit. In the morning, you will have 80 boys dead on their bunk beds across boarding schools in the north. People forget that that was going on. You had bombings in markets in Kaduna and Kano and Kebi and Jigawa. There was no, no, no state, Sokoto, no state in the north where you were not every weekend. I'm not saying something that happened every month. Every weekend, there was a new bombing of a new market. In fact, the incumbent president was almost killed in Kaduna by the same groups. The entire city of Abuja was a checkpoint. You were here. I'm sure you were there at that time, or at least saw it. I was there. So the notion that we have not had a single bomb attack in Abuja from 2015 to today, knock on wood, it continues. We have not. To the idea that, oh, good luck, Jonathan, now looks so good, I, I think is, is almost offensive, uh, given the facts. Then on top of that, the Boko Haram that you're talking about controlled uh, about a third uh, of, a, of, of the northeast of this country at the worst point in time. Uh, at the time we took over, they controlled several local governments. They were administering taxes and governing uh, over spaces. Emirs had been run out of their thrones to IDP camps. Local government chairman, IDP camps. That's what was going on. Maiduguri Airport was closed for three years. It has been opened since 2017. It has not been closed since then. Now. Uh, I, 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 I situate all of this to say that today Boko Haram controls zero territory in this country. The Iswap faction that we, that we all talk about, uh, uh, that was controlled by Abu Musab al-Banawi, the commander al-Banawi is now dead. Under the uh, leadership of this commander-in-chief, the military removed him from the battlefield. Abu Bakar Shekau of the original Boko Haram, the commander that was mocking the man that you're praising now, good luck Jonathan, in public on video, he's now dead under this commander in chief the the now you now How say that you yeah, know but I, so now so now he, he you know he died once and he's fully dead and everybody recognizes that he's dead so not only is he dead the people he was fighting with are dead too so there's really nothing to talk about now oh, if you no, sorry, but, no I'm, you I'm talking, talking about, about Boko Haram okay. now in addition to that in addition to that you made the, the, the very interesting, in fact, I could see almost glee on your face as you were saying, if I spin this pen, almost everywhere there's a problem. I will correct that notion. If you remember, uh, uh, you're, you're, you're wrong to state that banditry was not a problem before. Banditry was a major problem under Good Luck Jonathan. It's just that Boko Haram was such a terrible problem then that nobody talked about the bandits that were kidnapping but and killing people. Your government campaign. No, no to I'm, put I'm, an I'm coming. I'm coming. So I'm coming. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to understand why you keep going back to Jonathan. No, no, no. Because you're, 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 no, your question. No, Marianne. To Marianne. To no, it's because of the jungle. See, full no. Of people were see, kidnapped see, see. And it took months Marianne, to get I them allowed out. you when you when you started. See, I'm sorry, but I have to ask this question. No, 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 no. You're not asking a question. You're making a statement. Why are you keep going back to the Jonathan? No, no, Marianne, Marianne, power, Marianne, this is unprofessional now. And Nigerians are looking now. to you. 
this is to do something. Do well, you're here now. to defend the government, so help no, me no, no, understand no, no, why you no, keep no, going no, no, back no, to no, the good no. I will tell, no, you, you started by advertising Good Luck Jonathan's administration and advertising for PDP. I'm telling you that, oh, you made, did you not make the statement in front of all of our viewers that doesn't Good Luck Jonathan look so great by comparison? I'm almost, I was almost shocked that you could say that on air. But listen to me. What I'm saying to you is that I'm, I'm making sure that you remember the reality instead of this fiction that you're creating for people. Yes, we do remember. So, 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 so now, so now, ABC, so that's why I needed to make sure that I bring that out so that I can tell you where we've come. Now, I've said Boko Haram out of it. Northeast is a totally different place now. You're not having bombings across markets all over the country anymore. Everybody knows that. Now, the issue of banditry. We had a major problem with these herdsmen, uh, farmer clashes across the middle belt for uh, uh, several, uh, two or three years, 2016, 2017, 2018. We have seen a massive reduction in all the conflicts that we saw in the Middle Belt. Nobody's talking about that. Well, in Benue, are you seeing the casualties? In uh, Nasarawa, in Plateau, all those places that were very bad. Are you seeing them? No. Why? Because we, start, we established new forward operating bases, new military uh, pers uh, personnel groupings in all of these various places, uniquely equipped and operationally uh, prepared to deal with those threats. They're not there anymore. Zamfara, I want to remind you of some of these things. Uh, banditry that we talk about, Zamfara turned into the hotbed of illegal mining and banditry, that they were even linked with previous state governments in, in Zamfara state. Today, Zamfara, nobody even talks about Zamfara as a security concern today. Really? This is, no, uh, 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 it's a fact now. Why? I'm saying it on national television. I'm not afraid of being contradicted. And you also said, Barry, so, Governor Autumn has been on the news every other week. I'm, I'm almost done with my point. I promise you I'm almost done. Now, the issue of banditry, the last major attack we had was on the rail line, Abuja to Kaduna. You saw what happened there, where, uh, you know, they, made, they had the attack and it was terrible. So we were able, fortunately for us, all of the people were released, all right, and we have thoroughly decimated so many of those elements in the forest along the Abuja Kaduna uh, highway and all of that. My point is that it is absolutely true that we have security challenges. But if you compare it to what it was, where you had people uh, threatening to take over the governance of Nigeria, you can't even begin to make that comparison. So when we say that we're building on the platform of what President Muhammadu Buhari has accomplished, we're not just talking about the massive armament uh, of our military. We're not just talking of, uh, you know, the success against Boko Haram and against uh, bandits and, and killer herdsmen and all of that. We are talking about the fact that generally, you can, while there's insecurity in the country, nobody can make a concrete case now that as we are today, today, that it's rising today. That is not true. It had, it had risen to a point, and, and it was rising. When you say 2016, 2017, 2018, if you said it was rising, I would have fully agreed with you. But we have definitely brought it down significantly, and people can see that even on the basis of newspaper reports. How many newspaper reports are you getting of these incidents? We want a place that will be secured for our people, for people who also come out from other parts of the country to do business here, to live here. We want them to feel secure because Lagos is a cosmopolitan place and it is the commercial nerve center of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. More importantly, we want it to be such a place that people come in, foreigners come in from all over the world to enjoy the aquatic splendor of what Lagos State should be. And we believe that this government, this particular one, has filled the people. Every morning, you hear people from Abramadi Center to Ekwe, four hours. From everywhere in Lagos, there is traffic gridlock. I experienced it myself. I went to Ekwe, and between Ekwe and Lagos, lucky where I live, it took me six hours. So you have a city that is not planned. There is planlessness. It's not only the island. You go to Ikorodu, it's the same story. You go to Badagri, it's the same story. You go to Ekwe, you go everywhere. It is a disjointed city where there is sporadic development without a proper articulated plan for the city. And I believe that it can no longer be business as usual. That this particular APC government in Lagos State has failed us. Mm -hmm. It is a true. It's been coming from Bola Ahmed Chinubu, came to Fashola. After that was Hambody, and then the portrait is the present governor. I believe that he should live and let, let us have a better city for posterity and for a better environment. There is no health care facility in the state. We have water everywhere. We don't have ferries on the road. When I liked that Chief Jack Monday was in government, as civilian governor in the state, there was ferry on the road, Babaki Kere, Itafaji, that used to commit between CMS, Okokomaku, and other places. 
There is this development going on at the Dangote refinery and other developments in Lekki Free Trade Zone. When they start operations, we don't know how we are going to move in that axis. There ought to be a coastal road. We have heard about four Fort Mainland Bridge promises nothing is happening. If you want to go into a papa, it takes you forever to go in and to come out. So there is no, there is no vehicular movement, and I believe that we can develop the water transportation. The state is dirty, the state is toxic, and there is abandoned projects everywhere. San Gross Market was brought down by government a few years ago. Nothing is going on there, nothing, no development. They just dug the place, and all the market women are there on the streets. You go from Lagos, go from Tinubu, go towards Martin Street, go down, go to Dusemo, turn into Jankara, smelly, toxic, traffic gridlock everywhere. A part of Jankara completely abandoned. The market has not been built. And when I was a child, I used to go there. So you see, you have Lagos of, um, it's not a planned city. And if we want to attain the mega city of our dream, it has to be planned. There has to be good transportation. There has to be good health facilities. There has to be good roads. There has to be, everything has to be in order. We we'll go everywhere in the world. And what we see in Lagos, you can do far, far, far better. I commend him on this Okada issue when he decided to rationalize Okada people and ban them from certain areas because they had become a societal nuisance. But that is not enough. It's more than just throwing people into employment. We have to create jobs. We have to remove agro roads from the road, from the parks. We have to ensure that we can move. In those days, you can move from any part of Lagos at any time of the night. Go to the nightclub at 12 o'clock, midnight, 1 o'clock. You are moving from one place to the other. So there's an urgent imperative need that we are going to do this. And the SDP government has a manifesto, which we believe is going to be a contract with the people. It is a development from the presidential manifesto of the party itself. You know, we have a president, Prince Adewale. We have a manifesto at the center. We also have a modified one for the state. And we are going to ensure that this manifesto is a contract between us and the people. We, it's not going to be, we will do security, later security get worse. We are going to improve the value of the currency, all these promises, as will not be a government of promises. There was a time they told this Lekki Ekpah Express Road, if you remember very well. We used to pay to the Lekki Ekpah Express Road and then the Osborne Ekoyi Road. And there was this, there was this, there was this NSAS problem. Mm -hmm. And after the answers, there were issues about collecting at both points. And it was the contention of people like us who knew that it was, it was like an abnormal tax. If we have to apply a route just to move from Osborne to Lekki, it's a very short route, a short bridge. And we have to pay. At that time, 400 naira per trip. If I pass that place three times a day, I pay 400, 400, 400, 400. It was not a daily pass. And it was, it was, it perpetrated action on people who lived in that axis. And that axis is not just a, where it is a, it's not a lucky, it's lucky, VGC, Abramadesu are down to it. Where, and government was gracious enough to listen to the protestation of the people. And the money was not, was not introduced. We commend them. But you see, they brought again another one recently. They say it's parking, parking tax or parking charge. We can't, we can't continue like this. Because we are in a time in this country whereby people are, people are, they are starving. People are hungry. There's no money. This will is eight hundred naira per liter. You can't buy kerosene. You can't eat bread. Then they are saying you should come and pay for things. We have to be reasonable in the way we traumatize the people. Mm. We have to find a way of generating money for the state. It cannot be tax, 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 tax. It must stop. Okay. So for me, as a, for our own governments, one of the things we will do is to look holistically at the tax regime of government okay. and to see the possibility of abandoning most of this. All right, finally, let's talk party politics. The SDP is not as um, f you know, popular in Lagos as opposed to the PDP, who is the main opposition, and, of course, the, uh, the ruling All Progressive Congress. Um, what makes you think that you stand a chance? You see, this question of popularity, I agree with you, but there is no statistical basis for it. But what, I, what I'll tell you now is this. I don't believe that the man who spends 12 hours on the road every day or who spends nine hours of the road is going to think about party when he's going to cast his vote. 
he will likely think about the most efficacious person who can come into government and make a change. In our campaign, at the expense of governance, I did now said it would be better for vice president to be allowed to be overseen the day-to-day -day running of Nigerian government, which I think is reasonable, which I think is sensible, which I think is responsive to the reality of the Nigerian situation. And in the case of Right Honorable Chibuke Amnechi, I'm confirming to you he has no issue, personal, official, or anything we can think of with either Senator Bola Metinubu or the party or the PCC. Nothing okay. that is not included now does not mean that like, me that is not consulted. The lead generator from River State was submitted by him to the national leadership of the party. Okay. So he's involved. Okay. Don't forget, the last time he was the DG of our campaign. But today, he's not the DG. And other such a person should be given a role, never a patron or leader of the campaign council. So I'm assuring Nigerians that APC is one. Our leaders are together in unison with our candidates okay. to ensure that come 2023, APC wins the presidential election. I'm a tenable star. I can tell you, and I can say unequivocally, is the fact that the man is not medically sound, and there are so many issues to bust this as such. We are all aware, we are cognizant of even when uh, uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu was visited in London by even the vice president when he was in hospital. Now, a lot of persons might dismiss this by saying, nobody, there is nobody that doesn't fall sick. But there is a great distinction. I'm using this hypothetically. I'm not saying that is what Bola Tinubu is suffering from, please, so that I am not quoted out of context. But there's a great distinction between fever. There's a great distinction between malaria and cancer. So you cannot say everybody must fall sick. Nobody is insulated from sickness. Therefore, you're going to compare the man that has cancer with the man that has malaria. For crying out loud, what is going on now dredges up the sudden past of Yaradua. What happened to Yaradua? We all saw where Yaradua was allegedly playing squash. And the order was affected by IBM, sorry, Olusoko Obasanjo, who, when the, the controversy surrounding the health of Yaradua was placed on the front burner, in order to dismiss it, mm. they, now, they now showed video of Yaradua playing squash. And we all knew what eventually happened. We also saw, recent, in the recent time, which is still ongoing, present, contemporary, that of Muhammad Ubuari, who is constantly, who has constantly embarked on the shuttle to the US, to the UK, and Saudi Arabia for medical reasons. We have to now, go. Chilibu, we have videos of Chilibu where he was looking for a trail. If it's APC and he wants to be a Shibanjo, okay, we'll start to listen. Mm. You know, so I'm not, uh, I don't function on a tribal and religious line. That's not me. So I guess people are looking for something to tag me with. And I also remember that I've been tagged as a homosexual in the past when I'm not. So in name calling don't bother me. That's mm. what I'm saying. Yeah. Let's come back to the politics of it before I come to Dr. Mo. Um, the Peter Obi phenomenon, I've asked many politicians when they come on this show what they think about the Peter Obi phenomenon and, and if they're worried about it, if it does give them a reason to want to step up their game. But then you spoke about the fact that you believe that these people are becoming more aware of the powers that they have. But we've seen Nigerians you know, be this energetic on social media and then election time, we see a drop of voter like apathy. An anti climate exactly. Kind of thing. Yeah. Can this phenomenon be sustainable all the way to this is the largest this is the longest time we've had to campaign for any campaign season. Um, can we sustain that momentum? Whether it be for APC, I, I, I whether it be for PDP or whatever, for young see, people in I, general. I don't see why not. Because what has gone bad has gone terribly bad. And the young people are beginning to feel a little guilty, if I may add, because they are finally realizing not only that they have the power to change things, but 
you know, they've been too long in the cooler. Yeah. And from here on, it's a new Nigeria, I believe that we're going to see because the young people are putting their foot down for the first time ever. And perchance Obi wins. It's not for them to go back to sleep. Oh. Hell no. It's for them to be more alive, holding that government responsible, interrogating that government, asking questions. Are those conversations being had now? Because you oh, see, yes. as... as as much as we see that love or that movement, young people being aware, are mm -hmm. the right conversations being had? Um, uh, yeah, Dr. Chidi, I have never, you see, if you, if you know, I had had this discussion with you in a sister, in a sister, <laughs> uh, in a <laughs> sister uh, television or sister <laughs> station. Uh, this is not you. This is a new you. And I'm happy. <laughs> it, means, it means we are making progress. <laughs> Dr. Chidi. Okay. Let, no, let's no, hear, no, no, let's see, hear Dr. Mr. Chidi. Yeah, Dr. Chidi, you know, you know, you know, true and true that I am not just um, um, uh, a spokesman to His Excellency Atiko Mubaka. I'm a friend of River State. I know River State very well, and I love River State very well. His Excellency knows that I hold him in high esteem, and I'm not sure, and I don't, I make no pretensions about this. But interestingly, it is about the party. It is about the people. His Excellency is one man who is pain. Particularly, even before the flag of the, of the presidential election, Governor Nyesom Wiki has been one of the leading voices in the criticism of the, of, of, the, of the current administration on the tears, on the death, and on the, the kind of hunger that has pervaded our country. You know? So it is not, it is not, it, it will be completely out of place. You understand? For anyone to say, look, to hell with River State. Not even His Excellency uh, Elijah Atiku Abu Bakar. You know, but with profound respect, I tell you something. If it is about the people, if it is about the PDP, if it is about Governor Ayu, um, the, the chairman of the party, Dr. Yocha Ayu, you know, interestingly, I am not aware, I don't work in the PDP, I don't speak for Yocha Ayu, I am not aware of any allegation of nine billionaire missing from the coffers. I'm not the treasurer of the PDP. I'm not the national uh, um, uh, whatever of the PDP. But the issue is, I remember listening to His Excellency, you know, a few days ago when he talked about a billionaire, which he just reiterated here, you know, which exchange hands. Of course, but you see, though, as far as I'm concerned, His Excellency being a lawyer and you too, you know, I, I listen but to the glory of God, I know your, 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 your debts and your background. You know, you should know too that for, for, for someone of the office of the governor, you know, making reference to such delicate issues without clear evidence, particularly when he's a lawyer, and not, you know, not, not making, you know, straight, um, um, uh, direct statement to say, look, Mr. ABC gave you this money and I have evidence. It's a different thing. But for me, when when, when they are placed, when they are based on the In closing, because you know, we're running out of time, gentlemen. At our level, no, hold on, Marian. At our level, it will become difficult for anybody to deal. Now, no, if, no, so, uh, my, you, brother, my, brother you, Shribu, my brother, my brother, let me say this to you. The governor yes. of River State didn't say it was hearsay. He said, challenge me, and I tell you, those businessmen that put the money together, it has left the poor view of hearsay. I want to no, think no. that the governor no. had come to make this kind of assertion on the character and person of Senator Yotra, you, I would, if I were him, but God forbid, I would have asked for further <laughs> explanation from the governor of River State. But be that as it may, be that as my brother Shaibu, I want to inform you Finally. that we have read on the page, on newspapers that a certain nine billion naira is is, is is not being accounted for, and that some members of the NWC have been offered two hundred and eighty million each in order to to sweep that uh, <laughs> on, the, on the carpet. And that the visit we, of the pres vice presidential candidate to the house of Senator uh, Abubakar Saraki is not unconnected with that okay. uh, uh, okay. issue that has come up that is presently rocking the end of this week. Badagri has one of the worst rates of cyber crime in Lagos State. I'm not sure if you know this. A lot of young people are on their laptops all day. If we have a center where you can train and learn how to code, right? You know, I'm sure you probably know about in-demand jobs now. 
It's not even based on what is available in Nigeria. You train, you know how to code in Python, you can be getting paid a thousand, two thousand dollars every month. You are literally lifting people out of poverty. And you don't have to say they have to go to university to get an undergrad before they can learn to code. Now it's about giving people skill that is in demand right now. Mm -hmm. right? And these are things that we are going to push all across the state. And even in our education system, you need a situation where a lot of people drop out in a certain year, but you want to equip them with enough skills to be able to survive, mm -hmm. especially in the places where they are domiciled. And that's the kind of thing that I'm talking about. So you know empowerment is truly building the capacity of people. I smile when politicians presume they know what young people want, but have mm. you sat with them? Mm. Have you asked them what they want? Because just as you said, the, what their wants and needs vary from one location to another. Exactly. So assuming that all they need is this and that, is that not presumptuous on your part? No, it's not presumptuous. You know, when I contested for Senate in 2019, I traversed 115 wards, met with so many young people, youth leaders in each of these wards, right? And there's dialogue. Now, you see, there's a norm and a mindset that has been created that makes it okay for young people, even not even people that are not working for the NURTW or whatever, or Last Park as they are called now, or whatever they remodel themselves to be, that just hang on the corner, they're parking your car and they want something off you. Or you're doing an event, they come there and they demand something of you. It has been normalized. And they are backed by the state. Right? So... And you see it when he read his ugly head during the NSAs, where BRT buses came with people to the front of the government house with machets, right? So the political party, the ruling party in Lagos State, has normalized and has backed this type of thing. So first, as a party, we work to deliver. We are not going to work or to use people to suppress votes. So already that job description is off the table. Then secondly, there's an engagement, right? I'm not, I don't believe in making policy for people. You make policy with people. And that's why I said you look at the comparative advantage in each local government. i give you an example of Badagri, right? If you can show somebody that legally you can generate $1,000, $2,000 every month from learning out code, you sit in front of your laptop all day anyway, right? And it's a dialogue, it's a conversation because these norms have been existing for over 20 years. You're not going to change it in a month or two months. You're going to directly link with them and make sure that the barrier to entry of any of these things is at its lowest point possible, right? And that's how governments will allow for this for um, very successful uptake of policy. If you just sit down in Alausa and you're making policy for people, it will fail. And that's what you see. You, that's why I said a lot of tokenism in this government, right? You see a policy, for instance, um, digital education. They'll talk about it and it'll be something that they'll talk about for like two months. But when it's time to continue or to expand it, you see it's just left behind, right? Because it's just about the look of it. It's not about the deepening of that um, thing, of that type of innovation into society. Um, a lot of politicians also make promises. You know, talk is cheap. People say, mm. oh, I will do this, I will do that. And then when it comes down to the doing, it, it seems a lot more... For example, the government of the day promised us um, to put an end to the unemployment and the underemployment that we're experiencing, to fight corruption, to deal with insecurity as we speak. I'm not necessarily sure if that has been done. Oh, it has not so been done. So again... Knowing that the, the bottlenecks and the bureaucracies that exist within the Nigerian system, of course, uh, some people say it takes one man, but then some others will say it takes a village. How do you intend to make sure that all of these things come to fruition without? Because again, you see, this has been a system that has been built over the years. It's been a one party. It's been one party that's been in power. Um, how do you intend to, you know, make that U turn? Yes, and I, I like how you highlighted promises that were made before. And that's why the party has been nicknamed All Promises Cancelled Party. The idea for me is this. Whatever we're trying to achieve, right, has been well thought out and is... I'll give you an example. As part of my campaign, because I believe so much in innovation, I have done monthly health insurance for about 50,000 people, right? Now, that sounds big, but... It costs 500 naira, and these people get access to treatment to the value of 5,000 naira. Now that might sound small, but micro health insurance completely starts to social engineer change 
Because now, instead of just drinking a go when you feel sick and have long-term damage to your liver, you can go and get a diagnostic test for typhoid or malaria. And this system uses innovation to partner with the pharmacies around where you are resident. Now, I am not in government. I've done this. I did this for two reasons. One, to show a different type of politic, right? That's not just about what you eat now, now, but a new normal. And two, to test this system to see how innovation can work in healthcare, right? So this is stuff I'm already doing. Now, for me, this is a, this government, Labour Party, the Obidati movement, Gadiba Revival, is a depart from regular politics. We are redefining politics. Our, our main agenda is to grow and nurture a whole new voter demographic to come into the system. Similar to abortion right now, the states are left up to make their own decisions. So how could marijuana have impacted the election? I think your first point, Marianne, about abortion was spot on. That was massive, a massive implication. For marijuana, though, the United States is not as puritanical as it used to be. It's not as culturally conservative as it used to be, right? We have widespread support of, for example, um, gay marriage. We have widespread support for uh, abortion. And marijuana is another thing that over the years has become popular. So how does this impact uh, an election? In states where this was on the ballot, young voters are going to come out and vote for that ballot initiative. When young voters come out, the majority of those voters that support legalizing marijuana will also vote for Democrats. Uh, so as Mr. Gunnison said, the Democrats should have lost 40, 50 seats in the House. They may only lose five or, or 10. And marijuana, abortion, and a whole host of other issues played a big role in motivating Democrats to come out. Has, in the last long period of time, has been a state that's generally supported Republicans. But recently, it's been moving a little bit to the left. And it's now a very, very competitive state. Hmm. You could argue that it's the major battleground in U.S. politics. They have a rule that if candidates don't receive a majority of the vote because of small party candidates that might also be running, they have to do a runoff until someone gets to 50 percent. Hmm. So Warnock and Walker will be heading to a runoff just like Warnock had to face the first time he was elected. His opponent is a very, very controversial figure in American politics, a gentleman, Herschel Walker. He was a former professional athlete, but he was especially known as an athlete while he was a university student in the American college football system. Uh, Mr. Walker has been controversial because of many personal scandals that have come to light during this campaign. It was revealed that he had many children uh, that were fathered uh, to women that he was not married to, that he had not disclosed publicly. They, they were calling them secret children because he had these children that he had not told the public that he had. In many cases, he was not really financially supporting those children or had any close relationship with them, meeting them only once or twice in their entire lives. It was also revealed that he had pressured women that he was dating to have abortions. Uh, and this is at the same time as he's running a campaign on banning abortion in all cases and that he paid for the abortion and wrote a thank you note that we can see is with his own handwriting wow. congratulating the woman on getting an abortion with the money that he had provided wow. uh, it also seems as though mr walker is not someone with a high level of policy knowledge or acumen uh, when you hear him speak he has a difficult time uh, coming up with sentences connecting thoughts together. This is in a great contrast to his opponent, Mr. Warnock, who is a very eloquent speaker uh, and has a lot of history and practice in the religious context, giving speeches to large audiences. True that both the APC and the PDV have got a lot of big names in them. But uh, for us, big names really, actually doesn't matter because big names without credibility, integrity, experience, and record of performance is equal to zero. The former vice president, as you mentioned, had been running for the presidency of Nigeria for the last 30 good years. 30 good years. Uh, if I were him at his age of 77, you should go and rest and assist 
those who have assisted them before, like Senator Rabi Musa Konkoso, who are agile, experienced, well qualified, record of performance, as I have said earlier. Uh, but even though he's running, you know, as a fact, Mary, that uh, PDP is not going to be on the ballot itself, meaning that uh, PDP is virtually equal to zero. It is not in contention because the PDP's biggest stronghold is the Southeast, which you believe me that uh, has been sufficiently eroded by the obedience. The other part where PDP is strong is also the South-South, minus OB in the Southeast, minus uh, Governor Wike, who hold sway in the South South in control of five executive governors as at our count today, and nine other gubernatorial candidates of the PDP across the nation, making 14. And uh, so pulling out of the PDP in the North, PDP doesn't stand a chance. I don't I think you should advise the vice president not to waste his resources because it is our belief that even in his own ward of Kojoli in the local government area of Adamawa State, Senator Rabiu Konkoso will beat him hands down. So where is he going to garner the votes to become president? Of course we know that God can make anything and do anything. But the the arithmetic it's not, it's not in his favor. Two, Senator Bola Ahmed Tunbu uh, had been a senator, had been a governor of Lagos State. But when you put on scale his record of performance between him and Senator Rabi Musa Konkoso, they are miles apart. He had never been a diplomat. He had never been a, deputy, a, a, a member of the House of Representatives. He had never been a minister, not to talk of a, de a defense minister. He has never been educated to the level of a PhD, and not only a PhD, PhD in engineering, like Senator Rabiu Musa Konkoso. So academically, records of performance, experience, they are miles apart. And you talked of, is there a turn? I don't know which portion of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria you are talking about. And the Supreme Court has just ruled that zoning per se is an alien to the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. That any Nigerian of age and sane without blemish can contest for the, for any office in Nigeria, irrespective of where he comes from. That is the ruling of the Supreme Court against those uh, part of the PDP that took Atiku to court. So that matter had been settled. It could only be it could only be Um, Mr. Gaudim, are you still there? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm having some challenges. Okay, but you can go ahead. We can hear you. Hello? Yes, just keep talking. We can hear you. Uh -huh. So, uh, definitely, uh, it is not possible. It is, it, is not, it is not possible for any of them to claim that uh, it is their turn. It is the turn of every Nigerian to be president of Nigeria. And the issue in politics is about numbers. It is not how big you are, which position you hold. And as far as we are concerned, Senator Rabi Musa Konkoso will garner 85% of the votes from Northern Nigeria. And we know as a fact that he can get at least 25% in six states from the South. That makes him already a president. But the issue is that even if he does not get enough spread, once he has majority, 
51% of the votes cast, he can be declared the president. And we are looking at a position where, with all the candidates put together, Senator Congoso can get 51% and above of the votes cast in that election. You are indirectly saying that Mr. Peter Obi, Mr. Rabi Congoso, who were bona fide members, and ran elections, won elections on the platform of the PDP, are just on the same boat as His Excellency Atiku Abubakar. I am not saying this to make anybody feel good or bad. That is a statement of fact. The okay. PDP presidential vice, uh, vice presidential candidate for 2019 was Peter Obi. So okay. that is on the, on, the clear, on, on the one hand. Now, when I'm talking about the differences between these parties, there are track records are there for us to see. Today, for example, not to just uh, miss uh, words and, and, and um, begin to come up with facts that don't exist. If we are clear with ourselves, we know what the PDP did before they left power. As of 2015, we knew where Nigeria was as of that time. So what we have is not a mud slinging, blame them for eight more years as the APC has done. We have a publicly declared, publicly presented for the last seven, since March, my covenant with Nigerians, the Article Manifest, which is the manifesto of the PDP, encapsulated in a five-point agenda that takes us from our problems with our unity, our problems with our security, our problems with the lack of infrastructure and the need to grow the economy and take Nigerians from poverty. Our two most cardinal problems today is a paucity in the in the pay pocket because the economy is run by people who seem not to understand economics and the security problem of this country, which is exacerbated by our agenda number five, a very crazy lack of education. Because you cannot move the people forward if you don't raise their brain power upward. And then the quality, seemingly intractable nature of our federal system, which has created a huge behemoth at the center that needs to be restructured for a proper devolution of power. So we have, on a scale, a simple matrix that will attract the upwardly mobile middle class, that will attract those who are involved in the economics of this country, that is geared towards a provision of power. When I say power, I mean of electricity, which is the backbone for any industrial output, okay. and then to make sure that we arrest the debilitating security situation in the country. Because we have seen it, that the present government has absolutely lost the plot. So what we have are both medium term, top, uh, uh, based on a tripod, short term, medium term, and a long term fixing up to the year 2030. I was happy if you, were, if you have heard our vice presidential candidate, uh, Dr. Ifan Yopoa, speaking of late, you will find that the PDP has a proper, well-structured manifesto that addresses the immediate and long-term needs of the Nigerian peoples, irrespective of their tribe and, uh, and clan, okay. and at the same time, willing to pull up the poverty level, pull up the poor man in Nigeria, in a realistic matrix of providing 3 million jobs is very doable in Nigeria, and raising our GDP at least to a benchmark of about five thousand dollars per annum, which is doable. Okay. So that is what we are saying. And for us to continue to lacerate and be held back by persons who are not on any ballot at any level, by persons who seem to be bent on truncating the upward mobility of the Nigerian people via the PDP, they are indirectly trying to entrench, insist on entrenching this very government. A government okay. which, in the last few months, in their own mouth, I remember Mr. Mr. Wiki speaking some months ago, that for Timu for, uh, uh, to have come to say he wants to continue the, good, the work 
of the present government is a slap on the on the on the on the, on the Nigerian people because we know that today a bag of rice is fifty one thousand naira. We know that the economy on a macro scale has gone from a proper economy to a basket case. We know that today, just within the pressure of just two weeks, the Nigerian era has almost turned out to become toilet paper. We know. So we cannot, because of the inordinate ambitions and anger of the select okay. few, okay. keep the whole Nigerian nation on the leash. All right, let that me... is what the people has come to do. And so at every stage, we have to hold the people accountable. And, you know, I, I agree with you know, what Akin was trying to say about, you know, the local government, you know, uh, 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 councils. I think this is, uh, you know, an area that is very passionate, you know, uh, he's very passionate about. If we can get it right at that level, then we we'll begin to gradually, gradually, you know, push the frontiers. But, you know, the problem again is this that the political class in this country, and that's why, you know, I, I each time, and I, maybe I've used it on this um, program, uh, Kamea's description of Nigeria, of the Nigerian state, where he said that it is a criminally wrong corporation, where the leaders are, you know, are armed and are hidden in the safe. You know, because, you know, what do I mean by that? You realize that in Nigeria, when you want to talk about state capture, in a way you can talk about Nigeria as a, as a country that has been captured by the political class mm. so and then if that is the case then you're going to ask yourself how come a political party is used as the, as the vehicle for capturing you know a state when the duties and responsibilities of political parties are clearly spelled out you know in the laws of the land in the constitution of the land in that case so if you look at it from that perspective and you look deeply at these political parties you realize that they are not exactly political parties because if they are political act parties, they will act as political parties. Mm. If they are political parties, they will they will act on the basis of 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 their leanings, of their ideological leanings, you know. And and on that basis, they will be able to map out a set of programs uh, for the people. So what it does, what it what it now means, is that we are left with. Uh, um. I think we're having a little connection issues, uh, issue there with uh, Mr. Chudi. Mr. Chudi, can you hear me? For the full self and aggrandizement. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we lost you for a second, but go ahead. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, yeah you know, so, yeah, so, so these are, are, are some of the critical issues that we have been confronted. Look at the issue of local government, for instance. If you look at the provisions of constitution with regards to local government, it is constitutionally provided for. It is a third tier of government, and people will argue, or you know, one of the, if not the most important, because it is that government that is closest to the people. Twenty twenty two has been indeed a very interesting year. We may not have started it on a very great note, but hey, we're all here. I want to say thank you on behalf of Plus Politics to all those who've participated on the show those who've supported us and those who've partnered with us. We cannot mention everybody's name, but you do know yourselves and we'll see you in 2023. But don't forget, the election year is now around the corner. We can no longer put it away. So you know what? Go get your PVCs. If you haven't gotten it, make sure that you stay there. If you have to stay the whole day to make sure that you get your PVC, get it because that's your passport, like I always say, to a new Nigeria. I am Mary Anakon. I'll see you in 2023.